All right, we're going to be going live in one, four, three, two, one. Hopefully we're live. Um, pretty excited. So we're going to go to the chat. Go see everybody again. Welcome back to Emergency Management Associates with me, your host, Scarlett Anonymous. Um, I just got to get this started. I'm going to start this. And I need to change the title. No, 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 no. Red. No, 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 no. Red's tagging me and stuff, which is good. We'll talk about what Red just tagged me in, actually. But. I just got to pull this out. Bear with me, everybody. I appreciate you. All right. So one more time. Third time's the charm. Okay. We're going to say this was a 5.2. All right. And then we're going to go live and we're live. So we're live on the speaker. We're live on Zoom. Welcome to Emergency Management Associates with me, your host, Scarlett Anonymous. Ron Tyler is off for the evening. I gave him the night off and so he could spend time with his lovely wife and family. Um, so with that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have all of you guys here tonight. Um, we'll be talking about a few different uh, things tonight. Uh, we'll be talking about the coronavirus. We're going to be talking about um, the Houston explosion. And we're going to be talking about the recent M4.7 that just occurred, um, but actually it's a 5.2 uh, in California. So this is a bar mocha nitro coffee drink from Caribou Coffee, which is the greatest coffee that I've ever lived. Okay, it's only it's in you know a few states in Minnesota, but it's a great great coffee place. All of their ingredients are clean, um, and it's really good coffee. And it's, it has nitrogen in it. Hey guys, I'm gonna need a lot of energy because I'm gonna be on here until two a.m. Central Standard Time doing Emergency Management Associates, and I will be doing Clarity After Dark tonight with my co-host Red Gypsy. So that'll be good. Um. Oh, I guess I could, I'll wait to put my other drink in my friend mug. Okay, sorry to interrupt again. Um, for some reason, the video's not working on the site. Just roll with it. It's already, it's live on Twitch. Okay. So I don't know what's going on. All right. Well, we got to roll with it. We got to do what we got to do. Um, oh, I wasn't I mean, hot mic. Um, yeah, we'll just roll with it. Can you let everybody know? Can you put an announcement up on the top, like video not working on site, go to Twitch, go to, you know, somewhere so they can actually see me live right now? That, you know, that might be an idea. Could you do that? No? Yes, no? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, cool. I don't even have to use it because it won't let me use my microphone, but you can hear me. So that's a really slick thing. Um, I actually enjoy that quite a bit. I'm gonna try to see if I can make this light less like obtrusive. I need a light because my light doesn't work behind me, but I think that's better. Okay. I just felt like it was really bright, you guys. Like, why is it so bright? Why are you butchering me? Oh, look at my cool sign, Scarlet EMA behind me. Don't you love it? That's great. I thought it would be fun to put up tonight while we were live. All right, and then we're going to get back to the screen sharing and all that good fun stuff because apparently we weren't live. So, and that's what, you, like I said earlier with the first two tries that, you know, sometimes live is, is not your friend, you guys. It's not your friend. Uh, sometimes you try to be live and you do everything right. You have all the settings, you double, triple check. And when you're still live, you get not a so, I mean, you can come up with every idea that you want to protect yourself, but then it's going to come to bite you in the butt. So, 
All right, let's see. We're going to, I'm going to text Red and let her know that I'm actually doing Ron's program right now. Um, Cause I don't even think she knows and she'll probably try to call here pretty soon and be like, what are you doing? And then I'm doing Russian. Um, so we're gonna start doing the screen share everybody. Are you ready? So for those who are listening on the speaker right now, what we've got going on is an M5.2 in Southern California that just popped up. And I was screen sharing before. Um, oh yeah, now it's working really great. Um, we'll also maybe do that. We do that. We do this. Oh, I didn't know you could do all this. Okay, anyway, we're gonna take our screen. We're gonna share that. Well, actually, maybe a new tab. Well, okay, we'll start from here. So here's the Freedom Revolution Network. We're gonna go down. I'm gonna go check out and see if anybody's in the chat. See what we got going on. Say hello to the people. Hello, people. So I do see that we are live. But see, sometimes it shows like, see, it takes a second. You guys, you see what's going on here. All right. Hello. So, yeah, we don't know what's going on, everybody. We're sorry. No, see, look. Even Scarlet has glitches because I am not used to playing with this trackpad at all. And I literally put my hand on it. All right. So we're going to keep going. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Mel gave me that information that it wasn't working. I'm going to tell everybody you can watch on Twitch or on all of our other live streams. Um, let's just let everybody know that. Okay, we're going to keep going down. All right. So now we're gonna go back to the earthquake. I just wanted to see if anybody was in chat. Latest earthquakes, here we go. 4.6 North Northeast to Barstow, California. And there's two there. There's the M2.9 uh, that happened right after it at about six minutes after the first quake. So let's go look at that. No tsunami warning issued. This says depth 3.8 kilometers and or two miles according to the tsunami warning center. So it was about two miles underneath the ground. So, you know, m relatively deep. I mean, you know, moderate, you know, to the surface. Um, a shallow quake, I guess, in terms of, you know, the crust. But we have to remember that their fault out there in Barstow and in Ridgecrest area broke. And they've had hundreds of thousands of earthquakes since the 7.1, 7.3 happened earlier this summer that Ron and I covered, um, as well as many other YouTubers out there. There was also a 3.1, uh, 17 kilometers west-northwest of Garland, Utah today, as well as 2.7, nine kilometers west of Cobb. And then that anomalous 4.5, 46 kilometers west northwest of Nia Bay, Washington. Um, this one's interesting because it's right on the other side of the Vancouver Island ranges, right out kind of in the ocean, but kind of in that sound region. Very interesting. Um, we haven't really seen activity there before. You know, the moment sensor looks pretty stretched. It looks like it kind of hit and then kind of, you know, dissipated out compared to 
what it looked like. What's this shake alert confirmed? What's shake alert, you guys? I don't know what shake alert is. Provides the performance of shake alert during this event. Oh. Initial alert after time of origin, 13.6 seconds. Final alert update after origin time, 26.2 seconds. Magnitude accuracy, initial shake alert was the M4.5, final shake alert M4.2, ANSS report 331 seconds after origin M4.5. Oh, so shake alert is like the epicenter kind of predictor and how well it works around from the epicenter. Okay. Did not know about shake alert. Did not know it existed. Do what's their product look like on here? Let's see. Just interested to see this because I haven't ever looked at this before. Um, you know, all of these proprietary products that they claim that they have, I find very interesting because are they quite proprietary? Um, you know, how does a proprietary program that tells you something the same way a seismogram or seismometer does, you know, just because we call it something fancy and now we copyright it. I think all science should be open source. I think that's something that needs to change in our scientific communities. I think that at this point, there's something that could be learned um, by everybody using it. So it's very interesting. We're gonna close this tab and then we're gonna go to the EMSC again and go see what we've got going on because I'm gonna show you guys on EMSC on the back seismologist page if you guys weren't here before or able to see the video. Um, there was an M4.7. We have 132 reports. Let's go see the testimonies for it. Apartment M was in, shook a little and something very light fell off the shelf, shaking for a few seconds in Barstow. The vehicle shook and I could feel the mild rolling. Came and went quickly. Knickknacks flying off shelves. Um, somebody said they were by... Um, just by Barstow. Heard it before we felt it, not as bad as the one in July. Felt earthquake shook side to side, shook the house and felt like it rolled from one side to the other. And see, and that's what was interesting about the moment tensor that we looked at, because let's not remember, let's remember that the moment tensor was very squished and very compact. So it's actually not surprising that they felt like it shook from one side to the other, because it kind of looked like a rolling wave on the moment tensor. Shaking felt southwest to northeast, back and forth, no vertical. Um, felt like a thud from upstairs in my room, slight jolt, made things rattle on my shelves, swaying motions. Um, so a lot of people from Apple Valley and Hellendale, which are very close, Victorville, California, which is 71 kilometers southwest from the epicenter. Um, somebody said they didn't feel it, but everybody in their home did. Uh, felt it here near Victorville, had a real sudden sharp rise and kind of like a low, almost humming feeling for about 10 to 15 seconds after the initial jolt. Um, somebody says in Victorville, I felt it. Somebody else says felt in Victorville, felt in Herspia, felt slight movement in Victorville. Gentle sway lasted 10 seconds, felt about 10 to 15 minutes ago, was laying down when I felt my whole bed shake in a 360 motion. Gently rocked my car in a parking lot. Someone said they didn't feel it. Felt it, weak jiggle like jelly. Small jolt. Felt it here in California City. Big Bear City, couple of jolts, then gentle rolling. Chair definitely shook, but only about two seconds in Edwards, California. San Bernardino, it shook. Sometimes it's interesting that people like took the time to like literally log into EMSC just to say like it shook. Why even spend the time? Honestly, people. Crest line rattled, but no damage. It definitely noticed a sudden drop, then some rocking just outside Ridgecrest. This is an Enochia. Um slight 
slight jolt I felt in Rosemont, California. Felt like the floor was rolling, San Bernardino. Let's go down a little bit more. Felt it rocking in Yucaipa, Lancaster, very slight roll. Felt it here in Palmdale. Heard it then a strong roll. I'm gonna put tear now off my notification. Forgot about that. Someone in Palmdale said I'll never get used to the feeling of it moving. A roll then two more, about five seconds total. It was less than the one I reported last time, but based on first reports, it was more than the previous report of 3.6. This one is less movement, but longer. I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> Felt an afterquake and I just received a notification or maybe it was a quake delayed since I'm 165 miles away. Interesting. That's a long ways to be feeling it. Walnut, California, my chair rocked a bit. Sandy Valley. Ceiling light fixture swayed back and forth in La Canada, Flint Ridge. Canyon Country joy jolted, then rolled. Um, Pahrump, they even, Pahrump is in Nevada, y'all. That's a pretty far bit away to feel it in Pahrump. Um, you know, Pahrump is the home of Art Bell. And you're talking a good hour hour and a half at least drive away that they felt this. Anaheim, Los Angeles, felt it in Burbank. Felt a tiny rubble when sitting on my couch watching TV, paused to question what the movement was, looked up to see my living room blinds, wasn't certain it was an earthquake till I opened Twitter and saw EMSC tweet. Oh yeah, let's look at Twitter. That's a good idea actually. I didn't even think about that, but that's a good idea. Let's see. I'm at that Clarity Show on Twitter. If you guys want to look me up. Um, oh, anyway. So let's see what we've got. California earthquake. Search Twitter, California earthquake. And this is a good idea if you guys want to know how to do this too. Um, how to search for things on Twitter. It's kind of important to know how to do. People are tight. That's how it is, though, when an earthquake happens. This is me and Ron, you guys. Look. Me and Ron during an earthquake. Right there. That gif is life. Okay. Computer, get your life together. Oh, I did that. I'm, I'm damning my computer when I did it to myself. But continuing. Okay, so there's the MSC's tweet that the woman was talking about, 69 kilometers northeast of Victorville, California. That was their original tweet. So that's interesting. Barstow, California, shaken by magnitude 4.6. Um, let's see. And, oh, that's an interesting uh, comment right there, where the guy says, to my California peeps in Houston, did you feel it refers to the latest chemical explosion, not the latest earthquake. Now, why that's interesting is because, yes, earlier today in Southwest Houston, there was a, an explosion, a huge explosion. Um, this destroyed 180 homes and people said it was like a bomb going off like a bomb going off people people's homes um people's roofs collapsed people's windows blew out front doors blew off the hinges i have never seen anything like this like even the last um disaster in texas that ron and i covered 
um, and that we came on the air in the middle of the night for, which I thought about last night coming on when this occurred, because I was up covering it because I was up watching stuff about coronavirus and keeping up top with that. But this is interesting because in the same time this is happening, you know, we've had two explosion like feelings today. People are really freaking out by this. And people are probably concerned, you know, look, earthquake mode in Southern California tonight. Um, people are asking, what if this is the year we're going extinct? Australia's burning, Africa's flooding, the coronavirus has millions on lockdown, California is overdue for a catastrophic earthquake, threat of nuclear war. It really is a tense situation right now. Um, it is something that we all should be aware of. There's a lot of things happening. Um, you know, here's eight news now article 4.6 magnitude record reported in Barstow felt in Las Vegas Valley, which that's like a two hour drive away. I hope people kind of realize how far this is to feel this that far away. Um, you know, people have, you know, their opinions about California, you know, but I would never want to wish harm onto the people of California for something like this. Um, this is just devastating. To be absolutely honest, it's truly just devastating. Um, interesting, you know, in 26 years ago on the 17th was the Northridge quake. People wonder if there is some type of correlation with time of year and earthquakes. I do wonder because of planetary alignment and what we know about planetary alignment, could that be true? Um, it's just really something to think about um, at this point, because why does it seem to have earthquakes happen at the same time of year, large ones happen? Most of the large earthquakes that have happened even in like Indonesia and other places usually happen between like December and March, then, you know, the 9.1 in Japan with Fukushima that happened in March, you know, this time of year, people believe we're on the backside of a planetary alignment of which puts us in play to have some serious issues with earthquakes and volcanoes and that whole situation. So I find that interesting. So until we find anything more, obviously we're not going to panic over one earthquake. Um, that's just not something that is smart. But like I said, it is something to watch considering when we see here that we had a large earthquake earlier today um, we've had a couple in the San Francisco Bay. Eastern Turkey is swarming after the large 7.0 earlier today. It's something that we're starting to see increased seismic activity in areas that we have not seen increased seismic activity before. And so what's behind it? Um, oh, look, a Chinese earthquake. We should look into these too, because I don't know how far these are away from certain states that have the coronavirus activity. Because, you know, we haven't seen earthquakes from China reported in a long time, right? And now all of a sudden we're getting earthquakes reported. This looks like it's in the mountains, not by any people. Yeah, I don't know if there's even like people up in this area. This looks like a really mountainous, treacherous terrain area. Um, so that's good. Likelihood of people actually being there who could be in danger would be low, um, which is important. So let's see what we got here. Mio can Mexico, this, why is it swarming here? Did we get a large quake here? Why is it swarming? What do we got here? There's the faults. 
please move this window away from the shared application. What does this mean? Okay, I don't know what that means, but okay. I'm working on it, you guys. I don't know how to necessarily choose all of these doodads, but we're trying here. So we're going to kind of pull this down. I'm going to look at the chat again, see what everybody's talking about in chat. Hello, chat pit friends. Um, let's see. We've got, thanks Mel and people who put the Twitch link on there. I appreciate that. Um, because that way we can actually get things going on. All right. So now we'll talk about coronavirus because we're going to stop the share real quick. We'll come back to me. <clears throat> we'll go back to streaming in a second. Okay, so we're going to talk about coronavirus. And why we're going to talk about coronavirus is because everybody's talking about the coronavirus, right? So <laughs> what the issue with coronavirus is, is that this is the same strain. It's called a novel coronavirus. Okay, and this one's name is novel coronavirus 2019. Other novel coronavirus strains in the past have been novel coronavirus 2012, which is MERS, Middle East Respiratory uh, Syndrome, and SARS. And SARS was from 2002, the one that infected over 8,000 people and 800 died. And that was the big pandemic deal back then. Now, those are all novel coronavirus strains. The coronavirus in general isn't deadly, okay? And it's similar to a cold, but can morph into bigger problems like pneumonia. Or with this new coronavirus, we've been hearing reports of kidney failure and kidney shutdown. Now, there is a document from the Chinese government that I do need to decode and translate, but it does have so far all the reports of the dead and what their clinical process was. So it'll say like gentleman age 72 from wherever in China, you know, had symptoms for five days, was admitted to the hospital. And then after that, you know, de was demised. So I'm gonna look through that report to try to, you know, check out more to see, because so far what I've seen is it's been mostly elderly um, and older people with compromised immune, immune systems, which would make sense. Similar to like the flu, which already this year has killed 6,000 people. Um, it's similar to that. Now, some people are calling it the Wuhan flu or this or that, but it is a coronavirus. Uh, they have tested for it. They do have a diagnostic test, but the diagnostic test, according to what I've looked into, they've run out of these test kits in places all over China. Now, if you go to the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page, I'm pulling up my phone right now, because I have all the articles that I used before on here. Um, if you go to Freedom Revolution Network's Facebook page, there's some, in, I've been posting for the last day about the coronavirus and about what's been happening with this coronavirus. Okay, so we're going to kind of go back to the beginning. This coronavirus outbreak started on the 30th of December in China. And ever since then, it's been exploding in, in its nature. Not that, and I don't think we should panic. I'm not going to be here to tell you guys to panic. Oh, the world's out there. We're all going to die. No. Okay. No, we're, we're not going to do that here. We don't fear monger here. We are here to prepare. And if you at least have some immune, immune, immune system boosting properties, you know, some herbs, maybe some tea, some tinctures, oils, you know, natural vitamin C, natural, you know, colloidal silver, you might be able to get through something like a coronavirus. Um, a friend recently said that her children had a coronavirus in the last month. 
And when they diagnosed the children with the coronavirus, they weren't very concerned that it was deadly or that, you know, it was a big concern. But there are also eight different strains of human coronavirus. And like I said, with SARS, MERS, and now the Wuhan strain of coronavirus, they're all novel coronaviruses, which means new. Novel means new in the scientific world for new viruses. Now, the interesting part about this is that this disease did not exist before 2002. There's no record of it. They do not know that it exists. They cannot find it anywhere else in molecular structure before 2002. So why is it taking so long to load? I just want to see the post. Okay. So, oh, and we had a video sent in by a listener. I wonder if I can show you guys of when we get to uh, talking about the explosion later. Remind me to show you the video from the listener. We got two different videos from listeners this morning um, who were in Texas who allowed us to use their video. So let's see what we've got. We're going to go back because I got to go back about a day back in these posts to start off and kind of explain what's happening, what's going on. And we're going to talk about Hal Turner Show's post because a lot of people have been posting it. It's been spreading like wildfire. We're gonna talk about it. Tonight we're gonna to talk about, are the myths true? Is fear mongering worth it on this? And what type of serious threat are we really looking at? So let's see what we got. Um, oh yeah, let's see while I'm not sharing, if I can pull up. I don't know if Facebook will work, but I'm gonna to try to pull it up so that I can pull up the map. So there's a map of um, the coronavirus. And I'm gonna actually send it to Mel so then I can pull it up. But there's a real time map of coronavirus that we're gonna look all together with. Um, and I will show you currently how many people are infected and all that good fun stuff. So let's see where it is. Send it to myself and then open up. Messenger, and then I can share it with you guys. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the post. So I'm doing one thing at a time. Now, one person who has been doing like consistent live streams for hours and hours and does really good research, I highly recommend Steve Luckner um, from Agenda Free TV. Now, certain things he won't show, like some of the videos and, and things, and he won't show news, which I understand because you're supposed to, if you are restreaming news, you should be paying for it. Um, so she's going to post it on the page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could put it on the website, too. Like live, real-time coronavirus tracker. That would be dope. I'd appreciate that. Because um, it's a good map. And what it does is it, like I said, shows everybody real-time what's actually happening with this coronavirus, how many people are infected. Um, all of that good fun stuff, which I think is quite important. You kind of want to see where this thing is at. And, you know, oh yeah, it looks really nice on the computer too. I've only been looking at it on the, um, the uh, phone. So actually we'll pull that up while we're talking. You guys can see that. I'm gonna close this because I don't need that now. And I'm gonna open up. Zoom. And then I'm going to share my screen. So everybody can share my screen. Oh, there we go. Boom. Exactly what I want to share. So I'm going to open it up. I don't know if it's yelling at me because it wants it to be bigger or what. All right. So here it is. We've got the um, Wuhan coronavirus 2019 NCOV global cases as of January 24th, 2020, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so that's about six hours ago. So we know it's over a thousand now. Um, so this hasn't quite been updated. Now, I wonder what's making them not have this real time anymore. This was a real time map. And I wonder what happened. 
with that. So 26 deaths we're still at, supposedly updated just a, you know, a minute ago. Okay. 36 have recovered, total recoveries. Okay. So people who have survived the coronavirus um, and have recovered. The areas in which the coronavirus has spread, it's almost spread to every province in China pretty much. The earthquake was kind of over here if we are, you know, counting where the earthquake was. And I don't, I haven't clicked on each of these individual little dots to see what they'll give us. So in Henan and mainland China, there's nine confirmed, 42 suspected, confirmed suspected 51 total. So we haven't seen anybody die, but there's quite a few there. Shanghai itself has confirmed 20 cases, 22 suspected cases, one recovered case. And right now in Shanghai, they are testing everybody coming in vehicles into Shanghai. Shanghai has a population of 25 million people. So with that being said, just think about what type of roadblocks, what type of police presence, what type of military presence would have to be available, okay, to stop a city with 26, 000, or 26 million people, just saying, okay? So now total confirmed cases are over a thousand. We know that Steve Luckner, Luckner let us know that when, I think BNO News on Twitter reported that. If you guys, and I think we, we can go over to BNO News here in a second. I just want to kind of just show you what the map looks like. And I do believe they do have all the global cases um, if you make the map smaller or larger. I do believe that you can see where it is all over the, the world. I'm sure there's, yeah, there's little dots everywhere. So there is a confirmed case in Washington. There's also a confirmed case in Chicago. Um, there is possible cases in many other places as well. Um, there's a few in France and the three in France, they believe potentially are human transmission cases um, where it's human to human because two pe three people in the same family um, and one who has not even traveled to China receive, have are under suspicion of coronavirus, as well as two people in Vietnam who went to China, passed it to a family member who did not go to China at all. So they're finding out that it's actually mutating into something that can have human to human transmission of which they did not know if that would happen, um, if human to human transmission was even potentially possible. Um, so that's something interesting. We're going to open up BNO News. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Gonna look up BNO News because they're decent. I mean, they they usually have try to have some good breaking news stories um, as well as some interesting uh, articles and links and all that good fun stuff. I'm surprised I'm not pulling them. Let's see. So Australia's first case is a Chinese national in his 50s being treated in a hospital near Melbourne. Um, new coronavirus has officially passed 1,000. Oh, tracking coronavirus map and data. Oh, they're doing their own. Well, I don't know. Stop the, I don't know what to do about that. Is that the map? No? Where'd it go? You guys have just disappeared. Okay, come on, let's see. There it is. BNO News map. So let's see what we got. I'm, I'm interested to see this because we're looking at this for the first time live together. I haven't got to see this quite yet. And then we're gonna go back to the articles and then kind of start from there. Um, so we've seen in the past week, the case is basically quadru, I don't even know how many times you could say this would be quadruple, quad like six times. I, I just don't quite know how many you could say this is. Um, since this is slowing down, we're just going to kind of forget that. We're going to go back to um, Twitter, though, for sure. Yeah, why is it taking so long? Okay. But 
you got to roll with it, you guys. So Europe's first cases, like I said, they have the first confirmed cases. There's two people. There's three total people now who all um, have this issue going on. Ooh, strong earthquake in Turkey. Oh, let's watch the video. Oh, look at that, y'all. That's terrible. Look at it. So we know that people are dead as well in Turkey. I think the last I heard were 18 dead in Turkey. Uh, let's go see what the trending topic for coronavirus is and go see what the top um, searches are while I pull up some of these articles. N95 mask does not protect against the end of 2019 Wuhan virus. Okay. Um, I know everybody is saying N95 covers it. And it may cover some particulates, but the best thing is they do make antiviral masks. Um, I don't know if people know about that. They do make antiviral masks. Um, and so that way you could stop some of the virus and bacteria. Something you could also use is like thieves oil um, on your mask. You, they do have essential oil masks as well that you can put essential oils in your mask and then you can, it will help uh, kill the bacteria that you're breathing in. Um, oh, that's a trending joke. Just saying. Um, and look at this. Okay, so bubonic plague, 1320s, Black Death, 1429, 1520s, Aztec Empire destroyed by smallpox, 1620, all of Mayflower passengers die almost with disease and infect most of the colony, 1720s, Great Plague of Marcel, 1820s, Cholera, Los Angeles, Mnemonic Plague, as well as in the 1920s, you had the Spanish flu. This is the cyclical cycle of potential pandemics as well. We've seen this happen um, quite often in history. I hate when it does this. Here we go. This is a rough translation from a Chinese doctor in Wuhan, China, who sent a video to inform the public. Go see. The supplies are in great shortages. Our medical team who just got off their shift are deployed to the front line again. The reason that I'm practically making this video at the front line is to alert you all and to raise your awareness. Let me emphasize once again during the spring festival, do not go out, stay home. Otherwise, why are we risking our lives? It's for my family, my loved ones and their health. I hope you can understand. I also understand that my family members do not access social media. So if you see this information, please pick up all the phones, call around, notify each other. This is something you must do. You must do your best to educate yourself regarding this disease. This is a political assignment. Okay, let's go see what it other says. Um, I would like to inform you with very bad news. The coronavirus has mutated. It is now a second generation virus. When it was still in its first generation, we were able to treat this. However, after the last mutation, it became deadly. This is because pneumonia is no longer one patient infected one other person. In this generation, one patient will infect 14 others. The rate of infections are now increasing exponentially. So everybody's a super shedder. Holy crap. Okay, so what they're saying with this is that every person now is a super shedder. So usually how these diseases work is that, you know, you can only usually share to like, you know, one person, you know, and that's usually how it works, you know, and then the next person tra travels to the next. But if one person can infect 14 people, and those 14 people can infect 14 people and those 14 people, like you start getting an exponential amount of people at that point with multiples. Um, that's actually a really scary precedent. Um, like I said, it's not something to be complete panic over because you can treat illnesses. What you're gonna wanna be aware of though is if you're somebody who has autoimmune disorder, if you have, um, in, in, or if you're immunocompromised already, you're not going to want to be around if this comes our way. Now, it's hard to say. Now, you guys, they're saying it's spring in China. So one thing they told me to be very aware of, and one thing I want you all to be aware of when we're looking at pictures from supposedly China and looking on Twitter and believing what we see, right? It is the end of winter, early spring in China right now, okay? 
And so with that being said, we want to look for trees and these look like evergreens. So I'll give it a break. And, and, you know, trees can look like this after winter, early spring before the buds come. But we need to pay attention for pictures that actually look like it's the end of winter, early spring there, because there's a lot of pictures that they're showing, okay, of people who are, you know, supposedly passing out in the streets and collapsing, right? Of which you see leaves and green on the trees. Now, that would not be the case, okay? So right now, because it's actually winter into spring. So we have to be really, really careful about some of the videos that we're seeing. Like these look more realistic because there isn't any leaves on the trees, um, like I said, and you see evergreens that are green, but we've gotta be careful because like, you know, like this meme, hearing all this news about coronavirus when you have a cold, because it literally has the same symptoms. There isn't much difference, truly, um, with that and this, okay? Now, some people say that the coronavirus comes from bat soup, maybe, but we can't prove that either. We don't even know where it came from. We can barely test for it. So, if you think that it can protect you, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. If we can't test for it, how can we say, do not eat bat soup? How can we protect those people? Because if that's the case, but do millions of people eat bat soup? Is it hundreds of thousands of people? How many people, like, is this something everybody eats? And because now it's turned in and mutated, does that even matter anymore? right? Because if it's mutated now to the next level, does it even matter that people ate bats and got it from that to begin with? I mean, yeah, you would want to warn people not to continue to do this behavior, but when you think about it, if it's now mutated, how does that advice help? Um, so that's the one thing that I'm interested in. A lot of jokes about this. Um, there's a lot of haha -ha funnies, lots of memes, but here's the problem with it too. And I'm gonna stop this share really quick to come back. 30% of the people who have perished in this have not had a fever. And so now even the screening criteria of which we should be looking for with coronavirus has changed. So that makes me concerned about how to actually go about looking for this, because if people can get coronavirus and die without a fever, but yet fever, runny nose, cough, lethargy are the symptoms, how are you even supposed to now monitor and gauge for this? You know, that, that's my number one one question in all of this is how do you even gauge for that? Because that was our main function that we used was we're testing for the coronavirus. We're, we're looking for, we're gonna test everybody in the airports and we're gonna take their temperature with a little temperature gun. And if you have a fever, we're gonna quarantine you. Well, now that those people are dying without a fever, how do you quantify the screening criteria? And will this turn into a potential travel ban for the world? Could we see traffic completely stop for activity around the world? Could we see that? Could we have all flights grounded around the world? I don't know. It's a good question. It's one that as it goes on, it, it very it concerns me very much because I feel as if it could be a trap for then creating something like AB99 in New York. Let's go look, we're gonna go look up AB99 because I, I really think you guys need to see what AB99 is about and why I'm concerned that this could be something that they knew about, okay? 
because whether you want to believe it or not, Bill Gates, yes, Bill Gates, Microsoft Bill Gates, just recently in October of 2019, he basically made um, an exercise that, you know, Ron has done many of these exercises as an emergency manager. Um, I have dealt with real life ones working with USCF and hurricanes. But Bill Gates created a pandemic exercise through one of his corporations called Pinbridge. Okay, and, and Peerbridge is a company who has some coronavirus vaccine patents and some of the patents that you guys have probably seen shared around on multiple shows. Um, and we have more patents here too uh, that we can show people and even compositions and mesh lids for treating coronavirus infection. Um, we've got quite a few things that are interesting, but the video speaks volumes. And I'm gonna show you the video. Um, actually, yeah, let's show you the video because it's a mock kind of jam deal. And we're gonna show you what it is. All right, I'm gonna show it maybe so that they don't pop me so hard. All right. We're gonna grab this and we're gonna figure this out. Um, it's sick, this video, because he three months ago in October did a whole exercise called Project uh, 201. And in this project, they mock a pandemic coronavirus. And what would it be like if a pandemic coronavirus hit the world? How many people would be dead? Bill Gates said 30 million in six months. So this is why a lot of people are, are concerned because this man has threatened for years about come having a pandemic. And then his company comes out with a pandemic exercise. So, we're going to go look at that. We're going to grab this link. I'm going to try to see if I can get it. I think I already posted it once, but it's hard to, uh, it's hard to go through this because they're literally censoring everybody who's posting about it. And we're having a hard time finding the patents and because they're fact checking them on Facebook and that fact check on Facebook is correct. There is no patents on the current coronavirus. True, correct, because this is the novel 2019 strain. But there are patents on all the other coronaviruses of which this one heralds like SARS and MERS. And so that's what's important. So yes, the fact checker is correct, but what we're looking at is that every other coronavirus has a patent for vaccine. Like that's a big deal. Um, so that, that's where I drop the, uh, the, the crap because it's okay. Yes, that is true, but so let's see if we can, it says, I'm going to have to send this to Mel again because for some reason, this just does not want to work with me tonight and it doesn't want to give me what I need. So if I post it from here and then put all my fun links in here then I can actually grab them. Okay, so here's the video. I'm gonna pull this up. Event 201, a global pandemic exercise. Okay, it's, this is an 11 minute video. It began in healthy looking pigs months, perhaps years ago. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. Gradually, farmers started getting sick. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. The sickest required intensive care. Many died. Experts agree unless it is quickly controlled, it could lead to a severe pandemic, an outbreak that circles the globe and affects people everywhere. Let's see if I can turn this. 
The mission of the Pandemic Emergency Board is to provide recommendations to deal with the major global challenges arising in response to an unfolding pandemic. The board is comprised of highly experienced leaders from business, public health, and civil society. We could be looking at double the number of cases in one week and 16 times as many in a month if we are not able to stop the spread. That would be on the order of half a million cases and it would continue to rise exponentially. In three months, we could be approaching 10 million cases. We're at the start of what's looking like it will be a severe pandemic. And there are problems emerging that can only be solved by global business and governments working together. Okay, so you guys, this was a fake like viruses and news. Animals and people for decades. Okay, so Often this was like a pretend. Um, I'm sure there are new technologies that make this was a pretend thing. Okay, let me turn my light back on. This was a pretend thing that Bill Gates' company came up with this. Okay, and put this out during the, their pandemic exercise. Does that not look like the news we've been watching for the past week? Does it not? That's all I got to say about it. Does it not look like what we've been watching for the past week? Okay. That's what it looks like to me. That's exactly what it looks like to me. It's really concerning. Um, very, very concerning. Um, and little one, we are on Twitch. I don't know if you can hear me, um, but the video is not working tonight. Um, and we don't know why the video is not working on the website. And Mel posted the link up. Let me see if I can grab it from the chat here while we're just kind of talking. Um, let's see. See, the speaker is going up on, up on, up on. It's like really um, doubling. Let's see. 1,320 confirmed cases worldwide, including 41 fatalities. First week cases in Malaysia, according to little one in the chat. Um, let's see if I can find what's going on. Um, Mel, can you post? Are you still listening? Can you post that that link again for Twitch? I need it. Um, let's see. I can't find it. Let's see. Oh, I can't find it. Goodness. All right. Hopefully, we can find it. Um, I don't know where it is. So, let's go with it. Yeah, the chat is just having a hard time. It's giving multiple messages and I don't know what's going on with that. But hopefully it's just some type of glitch going on. Um, and I apologize. We're obviously having some type of difficulties and technical issues tonight of which I do apologize so with that being said so yeah this was called event 201 again it was done by Bill Gates and his company the Perbright Institute who have patents for coronavirus and other coronavirus treatments um, which I found to be fascinating because they claim oh no we have no patent on coronavirus um, yeah that's true not on the new novel 2019 coronavirus strain but in general, yes, there is patents. U.S. Patent 941508-7B2, Compositions and Methods for Treating Coronavirus Infection. So we're going to go over that together. Um, so it, like I said, it is U.S. Patent 941-5087-B2. Um, the inventor is Nikolai Naumov and Albrecht von Braun. Okay. Um, Ludwig Maximilian's University at München is the current assignee to the patent. Uh, the patent was priority application in uh, 2014, so I'm assuming this one's going to be like with MERS. Uh, 2015, application granted in 2016, 1-4-2020, application status is active. 
can I tell you how many patents went activated um, in the last week that the application, at least today it's active um, and it doesn't expire until 2035. So this is the relates to the use of non-immunosuppressive cyclophen inhibitors in the treatment of a coronavirus infection in a patient. So they claim that they can use allosporavir and NIM811 and they claim that they can compromise administering a direct acting antiviral agent. So they claim that it's gonna be a method for treating coronavirus infection um, in humans and or in felines or a murine subject comprising uh, with a coronavirus infection. So they have patents on coronaviruses. They can cause severe diseases of respiratory and gastrointestinal and tract and nervous system in animals and people. Humans um, have known known about some human coronaviruses since the mid 60s and there are associated with respiratory common cold like diseases sars cov severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus is highly aggressive human agent causing the lung disease sars with often fatal outcome so basically this is the same thing so i want you guys to start instead of just thinking coronavirus in general because i've seen a lot of people be like oh well you know it's just a cold this coronavirus is mutated and a little stronger, okay? So it's not just your run of the mill cold. This is gonna be a lot worse and it's gonna be a lot quicker. So you wanna make sure that your immune system is increased now before you could even come in contact with something like a coronavirus. That is my 100% you know, advice to you. Cause that's the only way that I can truly see that you can protect yourself, honestly. Um, you'd have to be ready beforehand. That's just the way it is. Um, a few people, I don't know if anybody follows Laura Wells on, on Facebook, but I enjoy her quite a bit. And Laura has been covering this brilliantly um, because she has been following Mike from around the world and Paul Begley, and she's really into planetary changes, but she also pays attention to just about every same thing I do. I've been trying to get her on for a while. And this year, she says, once her house is done, she's going to come on with us and let us know a little bit more about her. Um, but until then, she alerted me to an article from the Hal Turner radio show. Um, and let's, I actually could screen share this instead of just sitting there. So we'll go do that. Let's screen share. We're going to go to the radio show. Okay. Which... It's great. Um, so let's go to Hell Turner Radio. Hey, everybody in the chat. Hello, chat. We love you guys. Um, but yeah, we are on Twitch tonight. I apologize about having the issues, but what can you do? Oh, yeah, we're going to look up AB99. That's actually what we're going to do first. Um, we'll do that, and then we'll go look up the Hell Turner uh, Radio show after that. But this one's important because I think this is where they're going with the idea. Um, and the, it's interesting that they already put this in and they want to pass this and they kind of knew it was coming. So I found it interesting. Bill number AB99, this is out of the state of New York Assembly. Um, an act to amend the public health law in relation to the removal of cases. And I find it interesting that they said it like that. Cases, contacts, and carriers of communicable diseases who are potentially dangerous to public health to allow the governor of appropriate health official to order the removal and detention of any person afflicted with a communicable, dis communicable disease in the event that there is a state of health emergency declared by the governor in relation to such disease. Section one of the bill adds uh, clause 2120 to the public health law relating to the removal and detention of cases, removal and detention, y'all, contacts and carriers where it may be a danger to public health or other orders. See that semicolon here? Look at that little semicolon. Okay, I don't like semicolons. That means, what? and what does that mean in context of the law? Subdivision one defines the circumstances that the provisions of this section shall be utilized in the event that the governor declares a state of health emergency due to an epidemic of any communicable disease. Subdivision two authorizes under clear and convincing evidence that the governor or his delegate may order the removal and or detention of a, such a person of a group or of a group of such persons by issuing a single order. 
the evidence should conclude that the health of others may be endangered by a case, contact, or carrier of one of the suspects or one of suspect of a communicable disease. And that after consultation with the commissioner may pose an imminent and significant threat to the public health resulting in severe morbidity or high mortality. Such persons or group of people shall be detained in a medical facility or other appropriate facility, <coughs> FEMA camps, designed by the governor or his or her delegate. Subdivision three requires that a person or group removed or detained by order of the governor or his or her delegate shall be detained for as long as the department may direct. Paragraph of subdivision four requires the release of an afflicted person pursuant to subdivision two after the department determines that such person is no longer contagious. Paragraph B requires the release of a suspected case or carrier after the department determines with the exercise of due diligence that such person is not infected with or has not been exposed to such disease and no longer is or will become contagious. Paragraph C requires the release of a detained person after the department determines that the person is not infected with disease or that such person no longer presents a potential danger to the health of others. Paragraph D requires the release of a contact of a suspected case after the department determines that the suspected case was not infected with such a disease or was not contagious at the time that the contact was exposed to such individual or after the department determines that the contact no longer presents a potential danger to the health of others. Others. Subdivision five requires that a detained person must have his or her medical condition and needs addressed and addressed on a regular basis, and that the individual may be detained in a manner consistent with proper isolation and infection control principles in order to minimize the likelihood of transmission of infection. Subdivision six provides that when a person or group who are detained for the period, not exceeding three business days, he, she, they, upon request, shall be afforded an opportunity to be heard. Now, listen, you guys, nothing says like under the law or that we have due process or that they're going to follow the Constitution. If said persons want to need to be detained beyond three business days, they shall be provided with an additional commissioner's order pursuant to subdivisions two and eight of this section. Subdivision seven requires that it detain, people are detained for a period of exceeding three business days and request release. The governor shall make an application for a court order authorizing such detention. The application shall include a request for expedited hearing. Detention shall not continue for more than five business days in the absence of a court order authorizing such detention. In no event will a person be detained more than 60 days without a court order. But look, they say you can be though. The governor or his or her delegate shall seek further court review of such detention within 90 days following the initial court order authorizing detention and thereafter within 90 days of each subsequent court review. In order for the removal of detention of a person or group issued pursuant to the further detention thereof and the governor or his or her delegate shall prove the particularized circumstances con constituting the necessity for such detention by clear and convincing evidence. Now look, they don't say that they have to follow the law. They don't say they have to follow the constitution, just clear and convincing evidence. And what does that mean? Are they gonna say, oh, well, we think this person has the coronavirus and so therefore they need to be, you know, detend, have detention indefinitely. I mean, I'm just really concerned with AB 99 and have been for a really long time from an anti-vaccine perspective. But now knowing about this coronavirus, it makes me concerned from that perspective because that means that they knew about it. Um, they, and here's their justification. A communicable disease is defined as any disease that can be transmitted from one person or animal to another. It is important for both persons suspected of being afflicted with a communicable disease as well as those around them to be properly protected. Currently, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services has a statutory responsibility for preventing the introduction, transmission, and spread of communicable diseases in the United States. Under its delegated authority, the Division of Global Migration and Quarantine works to fulfill this responsibility. Now listen to that, global migration and quarantine. Now where do we hear migration a lot? Mm, just saying, something to pay attention to including quarantine stations, as well as the standards for medical examinations that the legal foundation for these activities is found in section eight and 42 of the US code and relevant supporting regulations is found in titles. Oh, no, 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 that was right. 
the process of removing persons that may have or are expected to have been afflicted with a communicable disease is necessary to public health. The swift actions taken by the health officials in lieu of the Ebola virus outbreak in the United States are a demonstration of how swift and proper action can be of great benefit to public health. The removal and detainment of individuals who may be a risk to public health as a result of a communicable disease is necessary so that the danger of the spread of the disease is not a threat to this public. Isolation may be used for ill people to protect the public, preventing exposure to infected people. Quarantine may be used to restrict the movement of well people who may have been exposed to the communicable disease. Until it can be determined if they are ill, for example, people who have a communicable disease but do not know it, or for who may have the disease because of close contact with ill people but do not show symptoms, etc. State and local governments are primarily responsible for maintaining public health, controlling the spread of diseases within state borders, and among other state public health emergency preparedness powers, every state and the District of Columbia and most territories have health authority. The federal government has authority as well through the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention to monitor and respond to the spread of communicable diseases across national borders or if the state government is unwilling or unable to effectively respond. Now look at this. Even if the state is unwilling. Now, since when does the CDC have the ability to trump states' rights? If a state decides I don't want to quarantine or or detain people just because because I feel like this this bill could be abused. That's why I'm not that this isn't necessarily a good idea. But what we learned about during the Black Plague is that when you quarantine people together and when you lock them up in their homes for 40 days, most of the family died. People didn't survive. And so that's what I think people need to be aware of is that people didn't survive um so if you want to quarantine everybody together even if they may not have the disease and quarantine them with people who could have the disease or however they're going to set up these little medical concentration camps i'm concerned it can be abused um they've tried to pass this bill in the past and this time, I believe, here's the pre-filing on January 9th. I think it said it was uh, referred to the Health and Human Services Committee. Um, so we'll see if it actually goes into law. But for now, very concerned, extremely concerned with the AB99. I think AB99 is going to be the vessel that they start putting through in many municipalities around the country to allow detention of otherwise healthy people and start fear and panic so that when they do come up with this coronavirus vaccine by April, it's required for travel, it's required for movement. If this does get to the pandemic level that has been predicted through things like Project 201 and the Perbright Institute and other actors out there who have been predicting coronavirus outbreak. Um, so the Hal Turner Show, that's what we were gonna go look at next. Okay, hold on everybody. So I appreciate everybody for hanging with me tonight. And yeah, Ron deserves tonight off. So if you're wondering where Ron is, Ron is well. Um, but I told him to take the night off to spend with his lovely, lovely wife and so they can enjoy each other's company. So I did that. Sometimes, you know, as the owner of uh, freerevolutionnetwork.com, you know, I want to look out for my people. And I felt like you guys would appreciate somebody coming to do the show, but I, I told Ron, I said, I think everybody will be okay with me doing the show tonight and you actually taking your night off. So I did that. All right, so we're gonna look at the Hal Turner show. I'm gonna share uh, the screen here in a second as I pull it up. Um, let's go see. Now, a lot of people don't like the Hal Turner show and I get it. Okay, I get it. But it's something to pay attention to because others have been saying it, like I said, much like um, Laura Wells and other people. So we're gonna share the screen. We're gonna pull this down. 
He probably does that. All right. So coronavirus in China, 23 million quarantine, 2.8 million infected, 112,000 dead. Now, I know you haven't seen this anywhere else but right here on the Health Turner Show, uh, but it's something to think about. And he wrote this, and lots of people have seen it at this point. Uh, multiple updates since first published, see bottom. The outbreak is alleged new coronavirus is out of control and killing thousands every day. Covert intelligence sources who are former colleagues of mine with my 15 years with the FBI and the final years handling national security, terrorism, and foreign counterintelligence on the Joint Terrorism Task Force, who are presently inside China, confirm over 2.8 million people infected with 112,000 dead, chief cause of death, multiple organ failure. Now, this deviates widely from the publicly reported number of 830 infected and 25 deaths because ready for this, a message from the frontline doc in Wuhan has confirmed the reason for a stopped growing number of infected is because the hospitals have run out of virus test kits. Thousands of deads are being taken directly to incinerators, no funeral, no burial, just burned. Intel is getting actual death counts directly from the incinerator operators. People are literally dropping dead. So, like I said, we got to be careful with some of these pictures because, you know, are the leaves gone from trees? Does it look like it's early spring? Is this from recent? Because, like, look at this one. There's leaves all on the trees, okay? And I don't know. None of the other trees have leaves. So, this is something we need to watch. On hospital floors, waiting for treatment. Now, even doctors in hospitals are literally falling down dead. This new virus is different from SARS as that it causes rapid kidney failure. As of Thursday, the 23rd, January, the government of China has quarantined a total of eight cities, Wuhan, Huanggang, Izu, Chibi, Zhantao, uh, Quinjiang, and Zhejiang, and Lishuan. 20, 000, uh, 20 million citizens in total, plus. The Chinese military is now assisting with the lockdown in multiple Chinese cities. They're all wearing bioprotective suits. The CCP Central Military Commission has ordered Central Command to assist Central Wuhan assist the Wuhan lockdown in response to social instability due to panic emotions. The soldiers were equipped with biological protective gear they vowed to win the campaign. Motorized equipment will be put to use. Dongfang EQ-2050 armored vehicle and armored personnel carriers and light tanks were all put to use to defend the roadblocks. Even more astonishing, the entire profits of Zhejiang have been told to stay in their homes. 60 million people are told to stay where they are. It's not an official quarantine yet, but rather strongly worded advice. And I wonder if they actually did try to leave in some of these quarantine cities, what would happen? The systemic failure of Chinese society has already started. By this Sunday, full panic will be unavoidable as people realize food, medicine, and doctors are finite and resources and triage is in effect. Stores are already out of food. Now, what's interesting about this is supposedly some Chinese, um, media and journalists went to stores in Wuhan and showed that there was actually food available. Now, is that true? Is that every store in Wuhan or is this certain stores or was that a perfectly timed government propaganda tool? We don't know. Now they say no trucks are allowed to deliver, which I could see that because they don't want people on the roads. So I can't imagine that trucks and commerce is moving through effectively. Um, and it says when China collapses, as it looks like very much it will, China's collapse will set in motion a global economic shockwave from which the planet will be unable to recover for decades. In Australia, health authorities have confirmed a person in Sydney is in quarantine as of this morning, possibly contracting the potentially deadly coronavirus, suspected case now in Brisbane. New South Wales Health has confirmed it's investigating four possible cases of coronavirus in the state. In Canada, in Montreal, five people in Quebec who recently traveled to China and displayed symptoms of a respiratory virus are being tested for coronavirus. In Colombia, is on alert for a patient suspected presenting the symptoms of coronavirus originating in China. As if reported by various Colombian media, it is a Chinese citizen who arrived in the city of Cali after traveling from Turkey. The man was isolated to undergo respective exams. In England, the suspected case of fifth suspected case of coronavirus as in UK as patient rushed to hospital. 14 people in the UK have been tested for coronavirus with five confirmed negative and nine still awaiting the results, Public Health England said. New in India, two in Mumbai, one in Kochi in Italy, a Chinese woman who is in Wuhan has been hospitalized in Japan, a second confirmed case of coronavirus in Wuhan, male who was visiting Tokyo. 
In Malaysia, two suspected cases now in quarantine awaiting test results. In Mexico, three new suspected cases of coronavirus reported in Jalisco, Mexico. Nepal says a student who returned from Wuhan, China has been found infected with coronavirus. Northern Ireland, one suspected case. In Belfast, five suspected cases in the Philippines monitoring 12 people who had contact with Wuhan coronavirus, positive five-year-old boy in Cebu City. Saudi Arabia, several confirmed cases. Um, five people have died, two other patients were in critical condition with new confirmed cases of a new respiratory virus related to SARS. The ministry said in a statement that it informed the World Health Organization of seven new cases of novel coronavirus. The germ is from a family of virus that caused the common cold as well as SARS, the severe acute respiratory syndrome that killed some 800 people mostly in Asia in a 2003 epidemic. Health experts still aren't sure how humans are being infected. The new coronavirus, which can cause acute pneumonia and kidney failure, is most closely related to a bat virus and and scientists are considering whether bats or other animals like goats or camels are a possible source of infection. Um, since the, um, the first new virus was identified last year, and this was in 2012, in the Middle East, in people who had traveled to Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, or Pakistan. The WHO says the virus is probably more widespread than just the Middle East and advised to countries to test any people who had unexplained pneumonia. In Scotland, the government says three people are being tested as a precaution for the coronavirus, but no confirmed cases. South Korea, second case of Chinese coronavirus. In the United States, a passenger arriving on American Airlines, and this is the gentleman who I believe is in, um, the other gentleman in Washington. So they did a deep contamination process. The development comes after LA County health officials said it was very possible in the area would see at least one patient given the number of people traveling between the Southland and China. Health screenings continue at LAX from passengers arriving from China amid the coronavirus outbreak. The US Center for Disease Control and Prevention began conducting health screenings of passengers arriving at Los Angeles International Airport from China on Saturday. Possible case of coronavirus in Brazos County Brazos County is in college. Station, Station, it's a Texas A&M University uh, student. The second one is a Baylor ICU um, and a Baylor student who had just came from China. Oakland, California, uh, patients have been tested for the Wuhan coronavirus. Cookville, Tennessee, a Tennessee Tech student is being tested for coronavirus. Very mild symptoms, but met the criteria for the novel coronavirus 2019 NCOV, according to the university officials. In Vietnam, two Chinese nationals have been tested positive for a SARS-like coronavirus and are being tested in hospital. Now, a third person out of those Vietnam people have now went because the two Chinese nationals in Vietnam also got sick, a Vietnamese national who had not even left Vietnam yet. So that's who we were talking about. A Chinese man living in Ho Chi Minh City was infected by his father who traveled to Vietnam. See, and there's the third guy. On January 13th in the Chinese city of Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus, no available info from Thailand at all. Um, so beards must be shaven off for the mask, you guys. So if you're a man out there who has a beard, take it off. Take it off. Now here's the NIOSH model N100 filter masks. I honestly say those are, this is, a, this is what you want, you guys. This is what you want. You don't, like N95 is great now, like I said, or the antimicrobial masks, but if you can get these N100 filter masks, I think that's a good idea. Um, there also are suspected cases in my home state right now. Um, that's the article that Red sent me um, that's talking about having a, uh, two patients here being tested by the Minnesota Department of Health for novel coronavirus. Um, this is maybe, if it is two weeks, then you have the original initial quarantine of two weeks. Now let's think about this. So how long could it basically last? You ask Scarlett. Well, if it comes here, how long could we be dealing with this? How long, if I'm immune compromised, would I have to be locked up in my home? Six weeks, because you'd have the initial quarantine to make sure you didn't develop symptoms within those two weeks. And then there would probably be about a four week buffer period, like they say, where you hope that there aren't any new cases because that will be the criteria of when the pandemic could be declared over. Um, do you have food enough to survive? Um, I have questions. 
I really have questions. Now, here's some information that we don't know. Um, China's Hubei and Guangdong provinces declare first level public health emergency. All major hospitals in Wuhan were fallen. On the first floor of the Nerdo surgery, all doctors and patients were infected and all the wards were closed. Um, all recruits have been on a ventilator, the director of the Department of Infectious Diseases. Mm. The Chinese government official proudly boasts 80,000 respirators donated by Chinese members of the public that live abroad have arrived in Wuhan. Another 160,000 respirators and 15,000 sets of protective coverall are on its way to Wuhan. Well, if there's only 836 people, sick people and only 25 deaths, why so many gear? Oh wait, it could be because the numbers they've given out are publicly false. Okay, so, and this is one of the only places I'm seeing, and he does have, um, you know, members only information and all that. But we have new lockdowns in Huangxi, Dai, and Zhenjin County of a total of 4.5 million people. Confirmed lockdown measures in 10 city and one county in the Wuhan area, which is nearly 29 million people. Um, a list of lockdown cities due to coronavirus total of 29 million. They're saying they're mobilizing a health commission of 450,000 workers to build a solid line of defense and urges everyone to assume a state of emergency. U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said on Thursday it's allowing a special emergency authorization from the FDA to use a CDC-developed diagnostic test to detect the new coronavirus from China. Um, source in Wuhan says people are being turned away from hospital and loaded onto trucks, not told where they're being taken. When asking too many questions, the men escorting patients to the truck loading area told to leave things alone and go home, stop asking questions. People in the building opposite of him are complaining of bad smells. They believe many families who were told to self-quarantine are now possibly dead. All landlines have no dial tone. His Aussie cell phone works with roaming enabled, but cannot even get 3G data now. Um, this is interesting. I mean, I don't know what to think about these reports. Um, you know, Shanghai Disney is closing down. Supposedly, I heard a report that they're closing down all 70,000 uh, movie theaters over there. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's really, oh, check Steve Quayle alerts. Hmm. Maybe I should check Steve Quayle alerts. And, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, why would the Chinese government lie? Why would they tell us that the numbers are way less? Why would they do that, Scarlett, you ask? You know, why would, why would they do that? You know, that doesn't make sense that you would have, you know, this big outbreak and then they, get, they lie about it because this is public health and everybody around the world is concerned. Well, it's much like what we talk about during natural disasters, that if you have millions of people and you can't evacuate, this one is an evacuation type situation. They allowed people to evacuate before the lockdowns, but now lockdowns are dropping like flies over there. So even if you move to somewhere else, how do you know that your area won't be next on the lockdown list and now you're stuck? And if you're stuck in a new area, how does that work for you? Um, so we know that. And it just really makes me concerned at this point. You know, I'm just thinking about it, just almost sick to my stomach because I'm not concerned, like I said, about people catching it or, you know, the spread or, you know, cause so far we haven't had any deaths outside of China. So that's number one. Number two is Yes, it's spreading, but if everybody's turned into a super shedder, well, what do you expect? Okay, you can only do so much as a super shedder when you're passing it out um, to people because they said one person, you know, let's say three people can pass it to 14 people, you know, you're talking, you know, 50 people almost, you know, I mean, that is just something to think about, you know. It, it's like 42 people. If each person infects, you know, 14 people and those 14 people, then, you know, you'd, fight, you'd have 600 people if those then 14 infected another 14. 
So you see how quickly this compounds and then those 14 and then the 500 can hit 14 more. So then you'd have that times 14 and now you have 8,000 people who've had it. So this is why it's just the numbers that are actually coming up was the rapid spread and how they could all detain us is what concerns me. Because would people, let's say you brush by somebody in the grocery store and then quarantine comes to our areas and they know you were at this grocery store and they know this person had the Wuhan coronavirus, they're gonna lock you up now because you were there and you were exposed and now you have to be under quarantine for 14 days. You know, will people lose their jobs over that? Um, will people lose their livelihoods? I mean, this is a big question. I mean, we don't know. But if bills like AB 99 can happen, well, will we be detained? And there's also language in that bill that you can't like disdain, you can't like try, you'll get charged with like disorderly conduct or like some type of rules where you can't even leave or if you attempt to leave, you'll be in trouble, which I thought was fascinating. So they're basically telling you, once we put you in here, you can't leave. Um, so this is why I found the coronavirus information to be mind blowing because this is something, some people are treating it like it's nothing and it's just a complete conspiracy. Others are like, we're all gonna die. And I'm kind of somewhere in between that. It seems to be man-made in some form, seems to be spreading rapidly in a way we've never seen. It's something new that we've never known. Um, all those things leave too much speculation on the table for me to say one way or another. Um, that's the only thing that makes me even hesitant to say like, oh no, we should, you know, totally panic. But what I do think everybody should do is get food, extra food right now, extra water, extra antivirals, um, natural antivirals like oil of oregano, um, vitamin C, um, camo camo powder is a huge source of vitamin C that I highly recommend to everybody. Um, get immune boosting supplements, elderberry, elderberry syrup, you need to boost your immune system before something like this comes because the real issue is if it's shutting down kidneys and, and multiple organ failure, can your body withstand it? Um, that would be the most concerning issue would, would be, can your body handle it? Um, you know, there was an interesting AP archive of a video that talked about could controversial author can claim SARS could be U.S. weapon. So let's let's listen to this. We're using this as fair use, um, so we're just gonna listen to a little bit of it. Oh, actually, I could no, no, hold on. I can show it to you. So this guy wrote a book, apparently, and um, he claims that SARS is a U.S. bioweapon. So. Oh, it's in Chinese. I had never watched this. I didn't. I didn't actually go through it. But he claims that, that SARS could be a U.S. bioweapon. His name is Tong Zhang, uh, author of the Last Defense Line. Um, and SARS is an unprecedented virus and there's no reported case record for it. So it's impossible to figure out the formula and function of the virus and sort out effective drugs for it. The U.S. has a zero death rate for SARS. This shows that it must have known this virus very well. Now, I just said that, you guys. We don't have any deaths in the U.S. yet. Now, a few people are saying, is this a targeted Chinese virus that we would put out in bio warfare to try to take out some Chinese? It's possible. You know, it's also possible is that there was a infectious disease clinic or I guess research facility in Wuhan, China that carried some of the world's most dangerous viruses inside this facility. 
So that's something that makes me question what's going on. Also, the novel coronavirus complete genome is available from GenBank where you can actually like purchase it for like an assay. Um, so I found that fascinating. Um, because it's just something to pay attention to. Like, how are you getting the assays and you guys have somehow genetically genomed the whole disease virus in a few days? Okay. But we can't figure out other diseases or genome them. Okay. Good to know. These are the things that I question when I see things like this. And I was seeing if I could find... Um, and then the U.S. patent for coronavirus isolated from humans, they, you know, there's a patent for that too, U.S. patent 7220852B1. So I found that interesting. Finding these things are hard. And I, I got to make sure that they're still there too, because a lot of things have been fact-checked. A lot of things are being removed. Um, I'm going to try to try posting more on the Freedom Revolution Network website so that I can post these things without fear of them disappearing, okay? So let's see what we've got. Um, yeah, coronavirus confirmed in Chicago. And then after this, we're gonna start talking about the Houston explosion that also happened today, because I find that fascinating, as well as an unconfirmed earthquake in like Tennessee area that people felt a few hours after the explosion. So I find it, I, I think there's some potential connection that we're not reporting on for whatever reason. Okay. Um, so let's keep going. Oh, and remember Davos is going on the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. Um, Davos, they did a speech about the next super bug. I don't think you can see that. But they did a video, go look up World Economic Forum on YouTube and put in the next superbug. They sat with a panel just two days ago talking about this and what pandemics and I just found it was too coincidental to come out with that. Because meanwhile, while the impeachment's happening and everything else, Davos, they're playing the fate of our world with the World Economic Forum and they're talking about these things and, and everybody shh about it. We haven't heard one thing about Davos. So true news is at Davos this week, they tra traveled over there to get some invitations from um, Trump and other uh, officials. But I still find it fascinating that, you know, these people meet in like Bilderberg and secret, these are the secret societies. These are the people who run the world. These are the elites. And they're having conversations about the next superbug and, and what health is going to look like and under these pandemics and they, they have it all planned out, you know, and I find it interesting that this is the first time we've been having conversations like this on a global level, but they have already got it planned out of what they're going to do. Um, let's see. Let's see what I can they also said that Wuhan's internet was going to be shut off as well, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. China's top lab was built in Wuhan, China. Um, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, it's called. It built a lab to study SARS and Ebola in Wuhan. And, and the U.S. scientists warned in 2017 that a virus could escape the facility located in the same city that's at the Coronavirus Outbreaks Center. The Wuhan National Biosafety Laboratory is the only lab in China de designated for studying dangerous pathogens like Ebola and SARS. Ahead of its January 2018 opening, biosafety experts and scientists from the U.S. expressed concerns that a virus could escape the lab. In 2004, a SARS virus leaked from a lab in Beijing. Experts say the coronavirus has infected more than 800 people and mutated in animals and became infecting capable of infecting humans at the Wuhan seafood market. But a 2017 article warned of the unpredictability of lab animals that scientists at the Wuhan lab intended to inject with viruses. Scientists warned that a SARS-like virus could escape a lab set up that year in Wuhan, China to study some of the most dangerous pathogens in the world. 
Now with SARS, like coronavirus has infected more than 800 there and spread to at least other 10 other countries and killed 25 in Wuhan and nearby provinces. China installed the first of five planned first of a planned five to seven biolabs designed for maximum safety in Wuhan in 2017 for the purpose of studying the most high risk pathogens, including Ebola and SARS. Isn't that cute? New novel coronavirus, which means new coronavirus, comes out of the city where they have this dangerous laboratory. Okay. We're just going to continue on here. We're not even going to say anything about it. We're just going to continue on. Tim Trevan, a Maryland biosafety consultant, told Nature that year when the lab was on the cusp of opening that he worried China's culture could take the institute, could make the institute unsafe because structures where everyone feels free to speak up and openness of information are important. In fact, the SARS virus had escaped multiple times from a lab in Beijing, according to the Nature article. Wuhan National Biosafety Laboratory is located 20 miles away from the Hunan seafood market. Some have wondered if the outbreak's epicenter is coincidental. But the scientific community believes that the virus mutated and through and jumped to people through animal human contact at the market. At this point, there's no reason to harbor suspicions that the facility had anything to do with the outbreak besides being responsible for the crucial genome sequencing that let doctors diagnose it. They had the genome sequence. Mm -hmm. They had the genome sequence <laughs> and they study viruses like this at the facility and they had the genome and they gave it up when everybody gets the coronavirus. Okay. Continuing on. Rutgers University microbiologist Richard Enbright told the Daily Mail. The Wuhan National Biosafety Laboratory housed at the Wuhan Institute of Virology was set up in the hopes of helping China contribute research on one of the world's most dangerous viruses. Constructed in 2015, the lab is still undergoing safety testing, but near ready to open in 2017. It was the first ever lab in the country designed to meet biosafety level four, BSL four level standards, the highest biohazard level, meaning that it would have to be qualified to handle the most dangerous pathogens. BSL-4 labs have to be equipped with airtight hazmat suits or special cabinet workspaces that confine viruses and bacteria that can be transmitted through air to the sealed boxes that scientists reach into using attached high-grade gloves. There are about 54 BSL-4 labs worldwide. China's first in Wuhan received federal accreditation in 2017. Upon opening, it planned to first take up a project that required only BSL-3 precautions to be in place, a tick-borne virus that causes Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Why are we playing with this in labs? Can I ask, why are we playing with this in labs? It's a highly fatal, fatal disease, killing 10 to 40% of those it infects. SARS-2 is a BSL-3 virus. According to the Nature's interview with the lab's director, Juan Zemin, the Wuhan National Biosafety Laboratory planned to study the SARS virus. So they were studying coronavirus. In 2018, the lab was operational for global experiments on the BSL-4 pathogens, wrote Guizhen Wu in the Journal of Biosafety and Health. After a SARS virus escaped in a leak from another lab in 2004, Chinese officials worked to improve safety, but also expand the country's capacity to continue to study the very viruses its lab has let out. Scientists at the Wuhan Virology Institute wear high-grade hazmat suits. On the Institute's grounds is the Wuhan Biosafety Laboratory, designed to study the most dangerous pathogens. These hazmat suits are intended to protect scientists from easily transmitted diseases like those that can be caught by breathing in while working at the Wuhan lab. After a laboratory leak incident of SARS in 2004, former Ministry of Health of China initiated the construction of preservation laboratories for high-level pathogens such as SARS, coronavirus, and pandemic influenza virus, wrote Guizhen Wu. It is not clear what or where those labs were. The Wuhan lab is also equipped for animal research. They spoke about the opportunity this prevents for the development of vaccines and treatments. Regulations for animal research that are conducted on primates are much looser in China than in the US and Western countries, meaning these studies are less costly and face fewer barriers that could limit or slow them. But that was also cause for concern. Studying the behavior of a virus like 209 NCOV 
and developing treatments for vaccines for it requires infecting these research monkeys in an important step before human testing. They can run, they can scratch, they can bite, and the viruses they carry would go where their feet, nails, and teeth do. So, with that being said, um, this is a lab, you guys. So, the lab that had these dangerous diseases somehow not responsible, not involved with a virus that they study or that a virus that they study that could have mutated could have gotten out. So, I mean, I'm going to let you guys decide on that one, how you feel about it. Um, to me, though, that seems like really big coincidence. You have this large, supposedly high-tech bio lab that's supposed to be watching this. And <laughs> the viruses you study get out. Just saying. So I think that's something that people should pay attention to. Oh, also, the WHO put out an interesting thing about meats. Okay, so this is like a meme. I'm gonna see if I can turn down like the brightness and maybe that would help um, for meats. Look at this. Okay, let's see if I can make it even better. Um, if I make it almost dark. There we go. Um, they talk about washing your meats and they talk about potential coronavirus spread through meats. And I found this really important because it talks about to reduce the risk of coronavirus, practice food safety, use different chopping boards for raw and cooked food, wash your hands when preparing meals and make sure meat products are cooked thoroughly and properly. So I just found it interesting that they talked about specific, you know, viruses with food safety to reduce risk of coronavirus. Um, because they haven't said that quite yet, that that's like how the animal transmission is happening. But there was an article about how this, you know, seafood market and open air animal market, they call them wet markets, um, you know, we're killing wolf pups and koalas and just animals that we wouldn't think to eat here that they eat over there. And so I just thought it was something interesting. Um, now we're going to kind of shift gears. I'm going to actually go look at the chat really quick. And um, I'm going to see what we got. People have been talking in the chat. Maybe they're on, let me see if I can get on over on Twitch and find us and see what you guys are talking about. Because I don't even know where to find you on Twitch. Um, so let's see what we got. Let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, there we go. Hopefully, because I'm Clarity After Dark on Twitch. So hopefully you guys can find me. Let's see. Oh, do you want me to verify my identity? No, because I can't necessarily get the... Um, let's see what we got. I'm still going to try to go see what you guys are talking about over there, but it's just taking me an extra second, like I said, because now I have to figure out some way. Okay, here we go. Sweet. I actually have it right here, so just give me one second as I then open it up. You know, sometimes these, you know, technology protections are interesting. Okay, we got to not play that. Okay, because we don't want that. So we're going to just search Freedom Revolution Network on Twitch and see what we get, because I think that's all I have to do. Yeah, nine viewers. Hello, everyone. So I'm coming over to Twitch. Going to mute that. Okay. So I'm going to mute it so then I can, you guys are over there. I can chat. 
Oh, thank you, T-Bird. I appreciate that. You know, I was really nervous to, tonight, you guys, um, about coming on air. And um, so that that's, that's very nice. I appreciate that. So now we're going to talk about the Houston explosion that happened this morning. Okay. And I find it interesting about what's actually going on. Um, it happened the same way that it happened with Ron and I of like a month or two ago, where we were, I was up in the middle of the night, you know, researching like I normally do. And I was looking at like the coronavirus, like I said, and I was researching that and watching the video from Davos and, and doing all that. And then I went to just kind of search on Facebook, scrolling really quick, and this breaking news alert update came up. And it goes unknown um, explosion in Texas. And I'm going to go pull it up right now. And I was just like fascinated by this, right? And so I go, hmm, well, what's going on? So I jumped to the Texas news stations that I know because I follow Texas news quite well after, you know, dealing with Hurricane Harvey and Tropical Storm Imelda that came and just decimated them recently this past uh, fall, where, you know, some of the same people who got hit in Hurricane Harvey got hit again and have had to deal with the consequences. So with that being said, um, we're going to go talk about it. Massive explosion reported in Northwest Houston this is coming out of ABC13.com. And officials seek to answer deadly blasts, answers to deadly blasts as investigation continues. Um, at least two people are dead after a massive explosion rocked a Northwest Houston neighborhood Friday morning, breaking windows, collapsing ceilings, and even knocking houses of their foundations up to two miles away. Officials have identified Gerardo Castorena Sr. and Frank Flores as two victims that were killed. The explosion happened about 425 a.m. in the 4500 block of Gessner Road. The origin of the explosion was Watson Grinding and Manufacturing, a machining and manufacturing company, according to its website. Houston police say that the two victims are likely employees at Watson Grinding. On Friday evening, a representative of the company gave the following statement. Watson Grinding and Manufacturing experienced an incident in the early morning hours of January 24, 2020 that resulted in fatalities of two of our employees and impacted our operations. We are saddened by the tragic passing of our coworkers and our deepest sympathies are with their families for their profound loss. We are working diligently to address the situation and cooperating with the federal, state, and local authorities investigating the accident. We are greatly, extremely grateful for the brave efforts of first responders who were there on the scene immediately, and we will continue to give our full cooperation and support to their efforts. Our hearts go out to the families and businesses impacted by this incident and then to our community. At this time, our immediate concern is the safety and well being of everybody in the area and our employees and further updates will be provided as more information becomes available. The man who spoke to ABC 13 said his six-year-old niece was taken to Memorial Herman Greater Heights Hospital to be checked out. Her family's house exploded close to the business and that this brother told him something fell on the little girl's head. The family is waiting to get more information. At least 18 people have visited local emergency rooms complaining of minor injuries and breathing issues. They do believe that propylene was in these tanks, um, but they can't verify that yet either. And I haven't got to watch um, local Houston news to actually, you know, verify what's happened since then. So local hospitals, um, the debris field and damage is between the area of Gessner and Stephanie in the lane in the West Branch neighborhood. As of Friday afternoon, police closed off two nearby neighborhoods, West Branch and Carverdale, that were impacted by the blast. Houston Fire Chief Sam Penna said, 180 to 190 homes have some damage. Officials aren't 100% sure of the identity of the victims, but they say there's a high probability that they're workers because they're the only two people missing and their vehicles were at the location. They said that the two victims of the families have been contacted and people should pray for those families. One of the victim's family members is a U.S. Marine, but the Marine Corps will not let him come home to his family until they are sure his family member is deceased. So Acevedo asked everybody to tweet the Marines to convince them to allow their son to come home. Chief Acevedo said residents would only be allowed to go back into those neighborhoods 
and patrols will be watching neighborhoods where people left their homes. He warned looters will be charged. I will not give you on a slap on the wrist. I want you to think back where Hurricane Harvey, where we caught someone looting and they were sentenced to 20 years in prison. Acevedo said entire structures were destroyed after blast. See, and I also made the correlation that it was probably just as bad as that when you're seeing it very much smaller microcosm of an area, but the devastation was next level. Entire structures were destroyed in the blast. Homes were blown out of their foundations. Broken windows, doors, and garage doors were reported near around the blast site. 48 people were directed to a temporary shelter of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on Shadowdale Drive. An overnight shelter was later set up at the Fairbanks United Methodist Church at 14210 Aston Street. Here's how you can help your neighbors watch go by and they show that um, the ATF was responding though the Houston Fire Department will remain the lead agency. That five national response teams were sent to Houston consisting of 30 members who include arson investigators, bomb technicians, scientists, and engineers. Now, when this last event happened in Texas, they didn't send all these people. Why are they sending them now? Do they think it's terrorism? Do they think there's an issue? All questions that I have. Um, I don't quite know what's going on yet. Oh, and thanks, Rain Girl. Um, sleep well tonight. I appreciate you tuning into Emergency Management Associates. We'll be kind of um, taking a small break here soon, and then we'll be restarting um, as clarity after dark, and we'll see if Red's around, um, and if she wants to, just so she can call in. Um, so I, I could actually have her call in now. Um, in a minute here, when we restart. So if the stream is having a little bit of issues, just know that we're going to be starting here again in a few minutes as clarity after dark. And I went a little over on Ron's show tonight, but I figured since we're kind of doing the same thing, it should be all right. So with that being said, we're gonna continue on uh, the Houston explosion. So I'm gonna do, they said there was no evidence of terrorism that the cause of the explosion was intentional. The owner of this facility says the explosion originated from a pro propylene tank. It's used to make a variety of projects Two Cy Fair ISD schools, Bain Elementary and Dean Middle School were closed. Spring Branch ISD remained open, but will keep students inside due to air quality concerns. As schools prepare to let out for the day, Cy Fair ISD officials said neighborhoods that were accessible by buses in the morning should be accessible by buses again in the afternoon. They asked parents to be patient because there could be transportation delays. If students are not able to be safely transported to home, they will be returned to the campus. Parents will be notified to pick up their children from the campus. So we're going to try to pull up um, a video. So let's see what we've got. Um, and I'm trying to go through it the back doorway because I think I can do it through search and then share my screen. So hold on with me. We're going to find it. All right. So they let me see it. Let's see what we got. A few more. I'm going to show the post. Oh, can I just look at posts? I think I can. Or I wonder if I could pull it up by videos. I've never done this before, like actually pulling up the page when I'm not logged in. Um, so let's see what we've got. All videos. There we go. Okay, so we're going to watch these two videos really quick. I'm going to share my screen. Um, let's get the zoom up. Put this down. Pull this up. Your screen right here and share. Now we're sharing. And open this up. Share. 
Here's the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power this sharing. Sharing. Open this up. Here's Correct. the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power this sharing. Sharing. Open this up. Here's Correct. the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power Power sharing. Sharing. Open this up. Here's Correct. the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power Power sharing. Open this up. Here's Correct. the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power Power sharing. Open this up. Here's the Freedom Revolution Network Facebook page. And we're going to watch this. Power 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 sharing. hard to do that with this one because this one's like an explosion and you get to see the brightness and you know this is coming from her nest cam you get to hear the sound even so it's kind of fascinating um so i highly recommend everybody go look at that and that is something i definitely recommend that's for sure um let's go see what else we got because I found this fascinating over there because it, I have a friend who's in Channel View and that's about 20 miles away from the epicenter of this. She said it rocked her house in Channel View to the point where she thought that she felt like the walls shaking. You know, people said they felt like it was a bomb, the biggest earthquake they've ever been in. You know, it's interesting because the sonic blast busted out windows, but punched in doors. And I find that really interesting because you would think, you know, you'd kind of get this whole, it's like a little tin can effect on it. And I don't know where that's coming from. So I find it fascinating. Um, so I, I, it's something that they keep having down there. And I think that that needs to be a question that everybody has a conversation about with the officials down there. Why does this keep happening in industrial areas? What is the contingency plan for future um, situations that happen? What is their plan to somehow make sure this doesn't happen again? Because we're having this happen every couple of months down there. Like I've reported on four or five of these events in Texas so far, like between last year and now. And so why are, it, and it's kind of like a dirty unknown secret that they have issues down in this part of Texas. So I'm just quite not understanding what to do about that. Because why does this keep happening? How many more people are going to have to get hurt or die before they try to install some type of safety measures or some type of an alarm that could be triggered that once there is an explosion, like a concussive blast alarm or like a seismograph, because then if there is an explosion, at least you could like see how much it was. Um, I think that something has got to change and if it doesn't, Texans are going to be at an extreme risk from here on out. Because if you're thinking about something like an earthquake that could come, or even the New Madrid, where you might feel some effects in Texas a little bit, if we have like an eight or nine, or even in, you know, how far away could they feel a nine from California? I'm just concerned that if something actually breaks down society, like another Harvey or Imelda or other things, there could be complete and utter meltdown with all of these different places that have these, I don't know what you want to call them, like industrial parks or 
um, yeah, industrial areas. It's really concerning. And Turkey's still rocking and rolling. Um, I see we're looking at, we're just looking at it. Yes, the EMSC really quick before we switch gears to become clarity after dark. You know, I always like to check this before I get off the air with you guys. Um, did anybody have any questions or have any concerns or anything that they wanted to talk about? Complaints, you know, I'll take complaints too. Uh, better than a, nothing. We had Turkey swarming, Japan's getting a couple, Puerto Rico, we still see some action, but that Western Turkey and Southern California and a couple island of Hawaii mixed in. It's something to watch because we're seeing, you know, 4.7, 2.2, 2.9, 2.3. So the magnitudes aren't quite matching up, which makes me think, are they reporting correctly? Because we're not seeing similar magnitudes that you usually see when the pressure is transferring over through that area. And so I find it interesting, like how varied the reports are. Um, so that's something we need to watch. Oh, one thing I'll check before we leave each other. Let's go check Volcano Discovery, everyone. Because I didn't look at that. And I know we're on wood. Okay. Volcanoes today. Ducono and Mauna Loa. Ducono explosive ash can, can activity continues. Um, continue volcanic ash to flight level 70. Mauna Loa, Big Island, Hawaii. During the past week, HBO seismometers have recorded 99 small magnitude earthquakes beneath the upper elevations of the volcano. The strongest was a magnitude 3.1 on January 21st. Most earthquakes occurred at shallow depths of less than five kilometers, three miles beneath the volcano's surface. Global positioning system measurements continued slow summit inflation. Consistent with magma supply to the volcano shallow storage system. Gas concentrations at Sulphur Cone monitoring site on the southwest rift zone remain stable. Fumarole temperatures as measured both at Sulphur Cone and the summit have not changed significantly. Um, so let's see what it said for today, because this is already on the 25th, because we're already UTC time over the next day. Um, so for the day, I'm going to share my screen for this. Let's go do that. And while I'm gonna get ready to share my screen, um, one thing I want you guys to think about is going over to freedomrevolutionnetwork.com. And if you guys can, you know, think about making a donation to Ron's program, Emergency Management Associates. Um, in the tribute section, you can put for EMA radio. Um, any donation over $50 will receive a free FRN or EMA t-shirt, just specify uh, what you would like in the comments. So all you have to do is let us know, and then we will absolutely get you in there. Where is, oh, there it is. So we're going to share the screen, get that going. So here's the volcanic activity worldwide. All right, so here we go. ASO, flight level 80. Sakurajima, flight level 60, tall, eruption to flight level 30, uh, so 3,000 feet. Semeru, East Java, discrete volcanic ash to flight level 140, 14,000 feet. Dakono, explosive activity continues, volcanic ash advisory center warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose up to an estimated 7,000 feet or flight level 70, moving at five knots in west direction. Sumatra, volcanic ash reported to flight level 140. So you've got Sumatra in Indonesia, Halmahera in Indonesia, Semeru in Indonesia. So you've got four, three popping off in Indonesia. Sangay, Reventador, Sabankaya, all not too far away from each other. Sakurajima and Esasan. And Nevada State Chalon. And we haven't seen Nevada State Chalon in a while. And so Ecuador, Peru, and Central Chile, which are all next to each other, are having some issues. Now, Sabancaya was puff emissions of volcanic ash up to 23,000 feet. Volcanic, possible volcanic ash activity at Reventador, 15,000 feet. Carinci in Sumatra, Indonesia, flight level 140. So, I mean, you've got a lot of activity over there. 
in many volcanic areas that's putting a lot of pressure volcanically on the earth. And it's not a surprise to see with this much, usually you don't see this much volcanic activity on the same day that a large earthquake occurs. Usually we see less. But are we starting to turn in to a whole new different situation? So like I said, today's Mauna Loa and Ducono. But one more thing we're gonna look at before I get out of here is I'm gonna go to the USGS HBO, Hawaii Volcano Observatory, okay? And why we're gonna go to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is because we're gonna go look at Mauna Loa's information. So we're gonna go look at their monitoring because we're under a yellow advisory and have been since the Kilauea eruption of 2018. Um, and you can always go to the volcano monitoring data. And I mean, you can look at individual stations if you want. You can actually see where the GPS displacement has been in the last two years, 10 years. Um, there's even, you can see which ones are gas uh, meters that tell you like the gas displacement and the GPS displacement. Um, so you can look at all of the different individual uh, monitored stations, which I find fascinating. Um, let's go see. So we're gonna look at the deformation data. So here's the electronic tilt at Mauna Loa Summit. Here's the past week. That's some serious activity with some infill it looks like. And oh, look at the tilt. Look at it cross convert points and then start trending down and the other, the other direction starts trending up. Huh. This is some activity, y'all. I haven't checked this in so long since I was following the um, Kilauea 2018 eruption. And where is this, what's this hole now? Where, why don't we have data from this point? Why are we missing data for September of 2019? Um, here's the past five years, steadily moving up, 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 up. Let's see. Here's the vertical summit motion in the past year. We're moving up, 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 up. Past five years, up, 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 up. Huh. So this, they say it's that this station is in an area that has historically shown the largest amount of uplift with inflation and offset in 2014 is due to an equipment change at the station it is not related to deformation of the volcano. Now they don't even show 2014 on this anymore. They used to go back to 2014 where you could see like where this was bottoming out and then there is like a little hole similar to this in 2014. So that's why I thought, oh wait, that's that hole, but that this isn't, they changed it. So that's interesting. You can also um, look at the data for the past week so here is an earthquake hypocenter map and cross section for the past week. I don't know if you guys have ever got to see this. I don't know if Ron ever looks at this, but this is something I used exclusively during the 2018 Kilauea eruption um, because it shows you how many earthquakes for the week, shows you the magnitudes by circle size. Um, so there was a larger one that was probably that 3.0, about that size in there. Uh, the smaller ones are tiny, you know, so you'll get bigger circles as it goes. Now look at this. This is what they are talking about. So the 21st, it shoots up with activity. So, you know, we had kind of been going down, down, down. Now it shot up, hit a peak, shot up again. So I find that interesting because if they're watching it, we're watching it. Now, here's the past week's activity. Okay, so a few more earthquakes. Map of selected deformation station. There's the electronic tilt summit which that's a lot of activity, you guys. If you go back to like Philip Ong's videos from 2018, you will see that Mauna Loa's activity when they showed Mauna Loa didn't look like this. And I used to check this weekly, but now I'm gonna stay on top of it more because I mean, just look at this. So here's the past month. You can kind of see it fluctuating, going up higher and kind of being very erratic during the month of um, January. And then now kind of hitting up to a plateau again with the cumulative, uh, you know, moments of about a 
to the 21st power. So you're getting about 25 earthquakes a day that are at least a 1.4. So they've had 369 earthquakes between 1225 and 124, okay? So that's in the last month. And then look at, look at where it, the tilt just drops and is now like evening out with each other, which makes me think, why is it working in tandem? Okay, um, usually it, it does its own thing because they're different directions. So let's go look at the past year because I haven't looked at it in the past year, to be honest. So here's all of Mauna Loa's earthquakes for the last year. You get to see all the peppered um, earthquakes 4,168 earthquakes to be exact, of ranging magnitude. Um, mostly all in the same longitude on this crater. This is actually a crater of the caldera where all those uh, earthquakes are. Um, hold on, let me see if I can circle it. This area, that's where all of them are. Oh, I, I have a little pen. I wonder, can I draw on it? Oh yeah, see, look, they gave me a little drawing stick, you guys, so we can draw on it. Bam. See, that's where the caldera is. Um, so I found that interesting. I'm gonna clear that out. How do I get, how do I get rid of this? Okay, I don't even know how I get this out. How, can I clear it out? Clear. Okay, there. Um, so that's interesting. So you got it all in the caldera. We're gonna come down, we're gonna look at the tilt, look at the last year, earthquake rates and depths. They kind of, you know, come and go and come and go. August and October were peaks, obviously in the past year. And then here's the deformation stations that they have on top. And then we have this gap of information. Why is there a gap of information? Because when you look at the summit, the cross caldera distance change, something dropped in September of 2019. And the summit vertical motion continues to come up, but it's spreading out, okay? And I find that really fascinating to start see in December, this activity start to widen and spread in, which means the vertical motion of the summit, it's, it's inflating, basically. Now we're gonna look at the data for the past five years, just to show you guys, including what the Kilauea uh, eruption that brought a few more earthquakes over with it looks like. Um, 11,843 in the past five years in this area, um, with some going kilometer depth. See, most of them are at the surface, how you know it's magma infill and, and pulse signatures and having to do with volcanism, because they're not deep down, you know, 40 kilometer deep quakes. You see, there isn't that many 40 kilometer deep quakes that occur and definitely nothing over 50 kilometers depth, okay? So that's just something to show too, that mostly these are up at this top shallow crust and there's thousands of them. Now let's look at the earthquake rates and depths. It's been steadily climbing up, up, up. And here's the deformation stations over the past five years. You can see in August of 2015, you have a bump. In 2018, you have a bump because you had that activity over at Kilauea. And then now you start seeing the spreading right here as of after August 2019 going into September where we're missing that data on the other one where the where it starts to widen. You see it's like on a real tight, tight, tight path the whole way and now it's starting to break free, break loose. So I'd be interested to see what it looks like now, to be completely honest. I would be fascinated to know what it looks like now. So with Mauna Loa having a little bit of activity, it's something to watch out for. Um, we need to pay attention for all things, you know, whether it's Cascadia coming, uh, we should be paying attention for that. If it is, um, let's see, I think I took off the screen share. Yeah, I did. Um, whether it's a variety of things. So I think it's something to pay attention to. Um, not that this will be, you know, the end all be all cure all but definitely something to watch out. And it's something interesting. So with that being said, I thank you all for coming to the Emergency Management Associates um, group tonight. Um, 
Ron, we gave the night off. Ron should be back tomorrow night uh, updating you all about the 4.7. Terry might come on. I don't know. If I had a way to contact Terry, I would have contacted him to see if he would come on with me tonight. Um, I know this is outside of his normal days, but you never know if somebody is willing to uh, come and help. And, you know, maybe sometime we could take some of you um, and use you guys as a way to power the show some nights as well. Um, I think that isn't a bad idea. So if you guys want to sometime too, send me a message at um, station manager at freedomrevolutionnetwork.com and say, hey, I would like to substitute or be a guest co-host on a show when I can't, you know, when other people aren't here. And we would love to have you. Um, we want everybody to feel comfortable and be able to get out information and, and have programs. So if you guys really feel like, hey, I would like to sometimes potentially, you know, do something different, let us know. Um, I would love to have you. I'd love to train, train you and get you guys on the uh, right path. So with that being said, you know, I know we had an issue with, for some reason, the caster not working um, on the website. We're going to try to figure that out. Maybe it was something, some problem with the way I put in the stream URL or something. I'm going to try it when I go back on to see if it doesn't help, but we'll see. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you for tuning in to Emergency Management Associates with me, your host, Scarlett Anonymous. We're going to be starting Clarity After Dark here in about, let's say, 15 minutes. So about 12.15 Central Standard Time, well, 12.30 Central Standard Time, let's just say that gives me 20 minutes. We'll be starting Clarity After Dark. Hopefully we can find Red and we'll be having a good program talking probably about coronavirus and other issues tonight. Um, kind of going over a little bit of the same stuff if you guys decide to tune over there um my my listeners don't necessarily cross over on ron's platform and and vice versa so we'll let everybody know over there in the clarity after dark family what's going on with the coronavirus as well as the 4.7 and watch for any other earthquakes or breaking news alerts and updates i'll be back with you guys i will come on i will personally take watch tonight that if anything happens I will be back on within a moment's notice here with you all updating you on what's happening. Um, so with that being said, from the land of 10,000 lakes, good night, everyone. <laughs>